Welcome to part two of lecture four of bluff body aerodynamics. So the, uh, let's talk more about the two dimensional types of separations. Basically these wakes that are caused by separations vary with geometry um, and the 2D ones can be kind of non-periodic or they can be periodic or they can be ring or spiral shaped. And which of those forms arises depends on the geometry which causes the separation. So first let's look at these sort of non-periodic wakes. So this is when you have kind of a one-sided step or a ramp. Right, so basically you've got a sudden step in the geometry, like a backward facing step that's shown here. Um, and of course you can get the same effect as a downward sloping surface. And what would happen if there was no step, but instead a sharp curve downward? Think about this for a second. Okay, so the, if you had a kind of a sharp curve downward, if it was sharp enough, this would cause a separation too, because there'd be a strong adverse pressure gradient that would lead to that separation. The big difference would be that the exact separation point would be, become Reynolds number dependent instead of being independent of Reynolds number and based purely on the geometry. In the separated flow downstream, we end up with a shear layer um, where the flow is essentially kind of pushing and pumping around sort of a, a recirculating amount of fluid. So you get this thin region across which there's a strong velocity gradient, we call that a shear layer. Um, that starts getting thicker as the flow mixes out downstream and the flow eventually reattaches. Um, and, and then we have this recirculation inside that separated region. So the mechanism from all of this that actually gives rise to drag, or at least one way to think about it, is the impact that it has on something called the base pressure. And the base pressure is just the pressure on the surface sort of facing uh, upstream, um, sort of behind that step. And that surface pressure is lower than the surrounding pressure and gradually eventually rises back to the free stream value. And that essentially provides suction at the back of the body, so it pulls the body backward, and that's drag. Moving on to the other, other forms of these 2D separations, um, these periodic wakes can be caused by kind of two-sided edges. Um, could also be caused by steep curves instead of sharp, sharp edges again. But basically, you've got some kind of finite length surface where the flow is separating off both edges. And when this happens, you get this periodic shedding of vortices as illustrated here. So you'll sort of get a vortex shed off and goes downstream and another one forms, sheds on this side and alternating back and forth. And of course you can have a mix of sort of sharp and curved edges, right? So you could have one side that's a sharp edge and another side that's a curved edge. Um, for example, maybe something like, like an antenna rod would, would look like this if you looked at the cross section. Um, and, and you can get you know, these kinds of asymmetric uh, separated behaviors as a, as a result. Finally, if I have uh, something that's not sort of 2D and flat, but it's round or roundish, you know, kind of ovalized or ellipt elliptic, um, you can get this sort of spiraling vortex shedding. And basically you get uh, uh, circumferential movement where you have an alternate shedding of vortices around the edge that leads to these spirals of vorticity. Um, so examples of where you'd see this on a car um, would be sort of the exterior mirrors um, that are typically some kind of off-round shape. And also on the whole back of a vehicle that's a very square back vehicle, you can get this kind of separation. The way we've been looking at the flow separations up to now kind of looks at the time average effect. But fundamentally, flow separations, especially any of them that are involved in vortex shedding, is a fundamentally unsteady phenomenon. And um, we can kind of look at the unsteadiness non-dimensional using something called the Struhall number. The Struhall number is just the, the frequency of the vortex shedding times um, h, which is sort of the distance between the, the, the vortices being shed, um, or if it's a single-sided thing, sort of the height of the step, divided by the velocity. If we have separation occurring due to adverse pressure gradients, like because of a sharp curve, then the Struhall number uh, associated with that will depend on the Reynolds number. But if it's a separation caused by a sharp edge, the Struhall number tends to be independent of Reynolds number.
So here's an example of what this looks like. Um, we've got sort of a, a body that has a blunt back and a huge separation back here, and we're gonna have vortices in the shear layer are gonna have some through hole associated number associated with them. Um, this is sort of shown here as 1.157. Um, but the sort of location of this sort of free stagnation point will move back and forth with a through hole number of 0 0.069. Um, and that movement changes the base pressure and basically means that you're going to get a cyclical variation in base pressure and therefore of drag with the frequency associated with this through hole number.